Hey guys, RC Anime here. Nako Yamada is a name that's been spreading around lately. A director at Kyoto Animation who's been highly regarded for her delicate direction, her ability to capture pastel imagery, and her elegant use of music. And you hear people constantly refer to Yamada as one of the best directors working in anime today. To which I think is true. But I feel like a lot of us are lacking context. A person is made up by the people who inspire them. And Naoko Yamada is no different. Though a lot of her influences don't come from where you might have expected, the lineage is noticeable. Today, I want to look at 5 filmmakers that have influenced Yamada in order to better understand her as a director. Beginning with... The ambience of a restaurant. The room tone of where someone sleeps. The echoes of footsteps in a corridor. Ozu cares about the sounds of the space. How people live and exist in them. Rarely does he use music to downplay the melody of real life. It makes the scenes feel authentic, like they're capturing a moment in people's lives, then a scripted scene. Yamada stays true to this placidity. As someone who heavily uses music, she's also someone who actively utilizes ambience and studies how silence can affect the character, how the signals of a street crossing resonate the end of an encounter. Or how the sounds of a departing train <laughs> alert the anxiety of a chapter turning moment. She finds importance in holding on to a moment in life, appreciating everything about that moment. The subtle movements of a person, the hush of a space and time. It's objective and honest. It's her appreciation of the impulsive, to which she borrows from another filmmaker. Sofia Coppola is a master at capturing snapshots of real life. Almost like a tourist in people's lives, Coppola's abundant use of film stock and handheld shots make her films feel like nostalgic diaries, video logs that highlight a specific moment in the world, moments that may be small in the grand scheme, but heavy on its influence to the characters experiencing it. These incidents aren't any larger in scale than the ones we undergo as normal people. Like listening to music while looking out at a vista. There's a spontaneity to Coppola's films, where she'll cut from episode to episode. Following snippets of different vignettes. Intensity. From an actor doing a film shoot to someone riding the subway.
These shots focus on characters when they're by themselves. Highlighting what's personally important to them. Or giving them space to feel defeated without judgment. This resonates to Yamada's own work. Where a character will mope to themselves, ignoring who's ever calling them. Or when a character styles her hair, testing different looks when no one's looking. Yamada doesn't only take inspiration from Coppola's emotional touch either. She's also openly influenced by Coppola's visual look, taking the grainy film textures of The Virgin Suicides and Lost in Translation and applying them into animation through illusions such as using a smudged camera lens to capture specific shots. Yamada cites the color of pomegranate by Soviet filmmaker Sergei Palazanov as one of her major inspirations. And the correlation is pretty clear to note. Palazanov's pomegranates features that very distinctive pastel shade seen in most of Yamada and Yamada-inspired works at Kiyoani. Something you see the most with the EV sequences in her style, where she's able to experiment. The images she composes have this flat quality with the character standing in front of walls but not taking up too much of the frame. It lets the surroundings speak for the characters. Pomegranates has the same feature, with its own flattened images making each shot look like a painting. As a live action film, it actually looks a lot like 2D, using a telephoto lens to distort the perspective. The actor's abstract movements add a subtle layer of density to the images, evoking a strange emotion. Something Yamada loves to do in her own work. It's a visual quality that's strange and far from reality, but Yamada is able to balance it along with her sense of realism. At first, this imagery was only found in her ED sequences, but as the more she works, the more visually experimental her films become, and her strengthening ability to balance the surreal with the realistic comes from her strengthening grip on controlling the senses. From the terrorizers to a brighter summer day to Yi Yi, late Taiwanese director Edward Yang had become one of the masters at balancing the senses of what's real to what's surreal. And the trick to his filmmaking isn't through CG sets or even expensive practical ones. He keeps his stories set in the normal real world. <laughs> The surreal element comes from the character's desires. <laughs> what they desire to see. <laughs> what they desire to do. <laughs> and at points, you forget what's really true anymore. This is something that's strongly felt in Yamada's Koei no Katachi. where Ishida's perspective is blurred from reality. In his head, he's too afraid to really know what the two parents are saying, so he's blocked it off. And what he sees only confirms what he fears. Sometimes it's done really subtly, where we witness a devastating moment without really realizing it, like when your best friends graduate and move on with their lives, leaving you behind. It happens in a flash, leaving you stunned, not really sure what to do or where to go. A fleeting sense of time, since nothing lasts forever. Show me. 
And Yamada is really good at capturing that brief realization. Because I think that emotion sticks out to Yamada personally. A feeling she wants to understand herself. But can't explain with words. So she tackles herself to find a way to express it. Yamada has always had this very careful trait to look away from her characters' faces, letting their movements tell the story instead. She focuses on other parts of the body, like someone's legs, seeing how two people might come closer together or farther apart. Sometimes she puts us just far enough away from a character so we can see who it is but can't tell exactly what they're feeling. I think this comes strongly from the works of Lucille Hazi-Holilovic, whose voice parallels with Yamada's. There's a strong sense of being a woman in both works, but not in the sense of being confined to their gender. These women don't need to prove their strength through physicality, through being tough or acting masculine. Their strength comes from their ability to tackle different emotions for anyone to tackle different stages in life, such as adolescence. They dress up not to look pretty for the men and women around them, but for themselves, to understand where they stand among others. With Hazuholi Lovik's films, you can find a multitude of Yamada in them, either if it's with their aesthetic, their sense of space, or even their costume design. She takes these elements and stitches them with Yang, Coppola, Ozu, Jodorowsky, and Svankmeyer. Yamada is such a great director because of the great filmmakers she's watched. All your favorite directors take from their favorites. And I think it's not until you know the context of where they come from, do you really appreciate what they're made out of. Because Naoko Yamada deserves it. We shouldn't just be watching her, we should also be listening, and finding out where she's really coming from. Just